Hello, 8th graders. This is Mrs. Politsky, and I have your notes for Chapter 5, Section 4, Declaring Independence. So, let's get started here. Uh, we're going to have another Continental Congress, and if you remember our previous section, we had talked about the First Continental Congress, uh, which began in the fall of 1774. This Second Continental Congress is going to take place during the spring and the summer of 1776, and again in the wonderful city of Philadelphia. Some of the delegates that are going to show up, some of our familiar faces, we have John Adams and Sam Adams, who were at the first one. We've got Benjamin Franklin. We have John Hancock, our famous uh, bootlegger uh, slash black marketeer. We have Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death, Mr. Patrick Henry, John Jay, our future Supreme Court Justice, Thomas Jefferson, Richard Henry Lee, and George Washington. And during this Second Continental Congress, they're going to get right down to a lot of important decisions. Uh, they got to do a lot of things here to get ready to fight a war. And so they authorized a printing of money. They set up a post office. They also set up committees to hand, um, handle the relations with Native Americans and other countries. They created a Continental Army. They also chose George Washington to lead the army. And the story goes, the day that they were making this determination, he actually came in his old French and Indian War uniform. Uh, they also came up with a resolution for independence. And eventually, they came up with the Declaration of Independence. So, in number one, Benjamin Franklin of Pennsylvania was well respected. He was probably one of the most famous men in the colonies at this period of time. He had been a leader in the Pennsylvania legislature. And in 1765, he had gone to London. And he had stayed there for about 10 years until about 1775. And he worked to have uh, the Stamp Act repealed. And during his time in London, he kind of took some time to do some traveling and he traveled the countryside. He traveled over into Ireland and he had his eyes kind of opened up to some of the atrocities that the British were imposing on some of their subjects. John Hancock, who you see pictured more on the kind of the portrait on the right side of the screen here. He was from Massachusetts. He was incredibly wealthy. Granted, he made his money kind of illegally, but he used his money to run the Sons of Liberty, one of the many patriotic groups. He had delegates uh, were able to choose John Hancock to be the president of the Second Continental Congress. And if you uh, recall, the signature on the Declaration of Independence his was the first, and it was one of the largest. And there's the, the saying that he wanted it, his signature to be large enough so that the people over in Great Britain could see it. All right, we have Thomas Jefferson. He was of Virginia. He was a delegate to the Second Continental Congress. He was only 32 years old, which was even at that time fairly young. Uh, he was in Virginia's legislature. He was also famous for his thoughts and writings. He was definitely a thinker, kind of the man of the Enlightenment, uh, maybe a little bit aloof compared to some of the other delegates. Um, a lot of the stories go that he wasn't much of a speaker. He didn't like to give up, get up and give speeches, but he was an eloquent writer. Delegates sent a petition to King George III to give Britain, uh, should be one last chance for peace, and this request was called the Olive Branch Petition. And the colonists wanted the king to protect their rights and express their desires for peace. The king did not accept this position petition and instead prepared for war by hiring more than 30,000 German soldiers that were mercenaries called Hessians uh, to fight alongside the British troops. The Hessians were, were kind of noted for their uniform. Uh, if you look at the painting below, you kind of have the, the gold colored hats. Um, their jackets were kind of, of a, a darker green. Uh, but these guys were big, tall, burly kind of guys. Uh, maybe not the, the puny uh, 
you know, colonist type of warriors. These guys were professionals. And thus, I think the British were very serious about uh, their intentions to win this war. In July of 1775, George Washington had arrived in Boston with cannons and supplies. He found the militia was not well organized, so he trained them. Cannons and soldiers were moved to the hills surrounding Boston. Washington's troops forced William Howe, who was a British general, um, to basically order his men to withdraw from the city of Boston in March of 1776. Now, are they going to totally disappear and go back to London? No. Uh, they're going to kind of regroup and then they're going to attack, most likely, in New York. So, January 1776, a writer, British writer known as Thomas Paine, he published a pamphlet anonymously called Common Sense. And in this pamphlet, he urged the complete separation of the colonies from Great Britain. Common sense strongly influenced the opinions throughout the colonies. It was really kind of a bestseller. Uh, Payne himself was kind of a complicated guy. I mean, there were times that uh, he um, is going to, you know, be a great patriot, and then there's going to be times that he's going to sound a little, little out of whack with maybe what the majority would like. Declaring independence. In June 1776, Richard Henry Lee uh, of Virginia came up with a resolution that stated that the United Colonies should be free and independent states, thus forming a new nation. And a committee that included Ben Franklin, John Adams, Roger Sherman, and Thomas Jefferson was formed to draft a Declaration of Independence. John Adams, who was kind of the ringleader, had asked Thomas Jefferson to write it. Uh, it kind of goes from the fact that when they were doing some debates, Jefferson really wasn't saying much, uh, but there were stories that these uh, that Jefferson was a pretty eloquent writer, and thus John Adams figured he needed to delegate some responsibilities. And so it kind of falls into the hands of Jefferson to come up with some of the thoughts here. And he was inspired by many Enlightenment writers, but probably mostly a guy named John Locke, uh, who a century before had written about government and, you know, the people and their place within government. And Jefferson just kind of crafts his declaration around some of those thoughts. Um, so let's talk about some of these thoughts. John Locke, who you see pictured below, kind of frightening, um, believed that people have the right to life, liberty, and property. Now, if you know anything about the Declaration, uh, Jefferson kind of plagiarized a little bit of that phrase, uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So, going back to Locke, people are born with these rights. These are kind of known as natural rights. People form a government to protect their rights. And if this government does not protect those rights, people can get rid of that government, is really what kind of Locke was saying. And that's exactly what Jefferson was channeling within this Declaration of Independence. So on July 2nd, the Continental Congress voted for independence. And some people thought, including Jefferson, that we would be celebrating our nation's independence on July 2nd. But on July 4th, the delegates approved the Declaration of Independence and they signed it on that date. Hence, that's the date that we're going to celebrate in the years to come. So, John Hancock signed first. He, president of the Second Continental Congress, wrote his name large enough for King George to read without his glasses. Copies of this declaration were made and they were sent around to uh, what used to be the old 13 colonies, but now these new states. Uh, George Washington, who was off fighting the war, had the Declaration read to his soldiers so they would have some inspiration and know what they were fighting for. So, four parts of the Declaration of Independence. The first part is called the Preamble. And matter of fact, this is a term that you're going to hear quite often. Uh, preamble is really an introduction. We have one for a Declaration. We also have one for eventually our Constitution. It says that the people who wish to form a new country should explain their reasons, okay? So, second part, 
are the rights of the colon, the rights that the colonists believe that they should have. And they kind of go into that. Third part are the complaints. And this is probably the part I really enjoy uh, because it starts off with many, many uh, sections or, or sentences that start off he, he being George III. And it talks about all the things that George III did to make their lives difficult. And then finally, the announcement of this brand new nation. All of this are part of the Declaration. So, thank you very much.